finish out the uh, assignment one, we're going to do the uh, the sphere and the torus. Uh, the sphere has um, some useful applications. Haven't made a, uh, a torus, but uh, it will uh, uh, reinforce the uh, the revolve. And then the uh, the other items I will do as uh, as an optional, uh, just as technique for you to to watch. Um, mainly because they don't um, they don't show up in manufacturing all that much. So if you get the uh, the basics and a good foundation, then we can build into those uh, those other geometries later on. All right, so I'm going to open up a new part. So file open or file new and then uh, we'll open up a uh, part all right i'm still in inches uh, i have not created a template so after we get past this uh, first week we will uh, go into uh, a little more detail on setting up some of our uh, time savers all right so again i'm not real concerned about the uh, dimensions, but we're concentrating mainly on the uh, the tech techniques. All right, so if I just go into Sketch, it's going to ask me, which is why one of my preferences from the feature tree is just to pick on the uh, the plane. It seems to me a little bit faster, but again, preferences, uh, whichever one works better for you. All right, so in doing this uh, this kind of introductory solids visualizing the different shapes and what we can do um, we're looking well let's go ahead and make a center line so with the revolve i do like to have the center line i want it to be vertical and infinite length so you get into this get into some of these habits and then i'm just going to right click and select i want you to get into some of these habits that uh, we can uh, we can build from All right so we've done uh, the um, well, let's see have we we've done the uh, the circles we have uh, three types of arcs the center point arc the tangent arc and the three point arc the tangent arc requires existing geometry so a line another arc to uh, to come off of an end point to start from the center point arc, like it says, we're going to pick a center point and uh, then drag our uh, arc. So that would be worthwhile to do uh, to do both of those and kind of um, uh, show the difference between the three point and the uh, the center point. The three point then is more free form. You can pick your start point, your end point, and drag to a uh, location. So on the uh, the center point, if I come across the uh, the center line, I'm going to see the little yellow box for coincident. Or if I bring it over to the origin, that would be the center. So it just kind of depends on where I want my sphere, where I want my geometry to start from. So if I start at the origin, and I've done a click click here, so when I click again, I'm looking for it to be on the uh, the center line and then I'll drag to 180 degrees and we should when I left click hold down and drag one of those endpoints I should, should see both of those moving and it should not be away I be able to move away from the center line also the little green box tells me it's coincident if I come up here the little green box tells me it's coincident and it'd be nice if those showed up a little bit bigger, but I don't know how to enlarge those. So um, when you're when you're on your screen, you'll be seeing the yellow boxes, the green boxes, and when you highlight it, if you're in 2020, I believe it was blue, and in 2021, for whatever reason, it's gray. They serve the same same function. So one of the reasons I want to do um, these these assignments, even the uh, the similar ones in 2021, is there are some some minor differences. All right, so fingers ahead of my mouth again. So let's go in and I can right click and do a smart dimension, or we can come up to the command manager and go to a smart dimension. If you want to hit, start hitting the S key, there's going to be a smart dimension. So multiple ways. One of these is going to appeal to you as the best way. They all get you where you need to go. All right, so this is a radial. And again, whenever we're doing a revolve, it's like we cut the part in half, 
we cut it that half in half and we're looking at a quarter of our um, of our object so any any radius you want to put on there three inches for the diameter and I've left this open on purpose so that when I go in to create my revolve boss base I'm going to see the currently open uh, non thin revolve feature and if I uh, would you like the sketch to be automatically closed yes if I say no it's pretty much going to make this hollow it's going to ask me for a wall thickness and I'm going to end up with a uh, uh, plastic ball or whatever so we go ahead and hit yes and it will create a line from those endpoints so if that happens to create self-intersecting geometry that's not going to be so good but because I have that center line already in place my axis of revolution is established I don't have to select anything else I can go ahead and hit OK so if we go back and expand out next to the revolve and then highlight the sketch you don't really see the center line, but you can see that line that SOLIDWORKS put in there for me. All right, so let's go ahead and utilize the uh, the solid bodies. And I'm going to hide. And I'll go back into the front plane. We'll go through the same sequence, center line, vertical. And it doesn't necessarily have to be vertical. It's based on uh, what you would... Um, uh, need your perception of the geometry that you're creating. All right, so I came up to the arc. I did the pull down narrow, went to the three point arc. If I decided I wanted to change the tangent, I could switch, or I can come over to the center point and switch. We're going to stay in this three point. So I don't necessarily have to pick um, pick anything to start, and maybe that'll be a good way to uh, to show the relations. So let's go ahead. And I'm doing this time a click and drag. Whenever you see this dash blue line, SOLIDWORKS is waiting for some additional information. So once I click on that dash line, then I can drag and approximate where I want this to end up. All right, so now I need to add the relations to uh, get this into, uh, into shape. So I'll go ahead and put it the endpoint coincident. Right, and that's the same as coming over here to the left and doing coincident. And then I need the other endpoint to be coincident. Vertical would have the same um, same result if I went origin to point. It really depends on what you what you select. All right, so I get um, that to go. We'll put a dimension, oh, let's just make it, um, we'll make this one a little bit bigger, three inches. All right, and then the origin didn't, um, or the center point of the sphere didn't move. So now it's able to move up and down a little bit. I need one more relation, and that's usually the way it works, is you get everything in place, and depending on how this drags, your number one diagnostic tool is going to be grabbing something and seeing how it moves. All right, so if I grab this endpoint, it's not really letting me go to directly to the uh, center line. So if I were to hit uh, control, select the center point, hit control, and then pick the center line, now I can go coincident. All right, so this time I'm going to connect the dots and that shows me the shaded sketch contour it's complete. There's no uh, gaps. Uh, it probably would still do it if there was an overlap, but if um, if I need to, I can uh, I can use that to um, help me diagnose and correct. All right. So the sphere, and since I didn't turn on my little blue origin, I don't really have um, have so much of a perception of where this is at. All right, so as I rotate, I'm going to kind of lose that um, that orientation in the 3D space. So if I go Control-1, that will bring me back to the front view. And I can take a new, um, with the, uh, the middle mouse button, uh, a new rotation. All right, so I'll go ahead and hide that one. The torus then is going to be very similar. We're going to have to make similar decisions. So on the front plane, center line, 
vertical infinite length. And I think out of habit, I just um, clicked on the, uh, the front plane, went into the sketch. And that's what we're kind of working towards is some of these uh, processes are automatic. And I clicked again, so I need to select that extra center line and delete it. All right, so I just want the one center line. I'm going to look for an inference, but I don't see a yellow box for that little horizontal line. So even though I'm in a horizontal position, I am not getting a horizontal relation. All right, so again, we don't really care the size of the, uh, the torus. Uh, this one's going to be pretty big at, uh, at 5 then, so probably need to bring it out. And let's just go 6 for the dimension. So one of the things of note is I'm going to leave this, but we have the ability to, um, to go to the min, the max, and to the center. By default, if I pick the perimeter, it will go to the center. So I want to right click on this and I'm just going to make it driven. All right, so that's going to create a situation where when I place this next dimension, I'm not going to see a, um, a conflict. All right, so if I hold down the, uh, the control button, I'm sorry, the shift button, and go to the uh, to the circle, the perimeter of the circle. I will get to the minimum condition. And remember that for our diametral conditions, if I jump over to uh, the opposite side of the center line, I will get a diametral condition. So radial, diametral, radial, diametral. Okay, if I apply that one, and then if I want to see the last condition, we'll go center line to the opposite side of the circle, right? And then same basic result, radial, diametral. In this case, because I have the, uh, the seven inch dimension is driving, I've now created a conflict. So I have two options. I can make this dimension driven and hit okay, or I can cancel it and it'll remove the extra dimension. So in effect, the six and the 17 are for reference. If I click on them, it's just going to tell me the dimension can't be changed because when I update the driving dimension, it's going to give me its value. All right, and then because this point, we did not get that last relation in for horizontal, it inferred it, or it, it showed me the uh, the inference line, but I did not um, uh, apply the uh, the relation. So select the center point and select the origin, that'll be horizontal. All right, so the point I wanted to, to make too is that if you are in the habit, uh, basically an AutoCAD habit of picking the center point, you do not get the min and the max condition. You only get that linear, whether it's radial or diametral. All right, so these are things that you're gonna get uh, exposure to, get used to, first time hearing it, seeing it. Uh, we have plenty of opportunities to uh, get in and uh, into the models and and see these as an application. So one more revolve And we hit OK and as long as my revolve is not self intersecting I'm going to see that geometry and then let's go ahead and save this um, All right, so return to my folder And I'll save it as the sphere torus and we come back and we start hiding these. So as I click on the solid bodies, we're going to see all those items. Now, each of these is a separate body because we did not merge these items. So if I was to go back into Revolve 2 and edit the feature and say Merge Result, now I have a situation where Revolve 1 completely, well, Revolve 1 goes away because it is now Revolve 3 that is, sorry, Revolve 2 that um, uh, is the last feature that was created. So let's hide this for a second. We'll look at it in terms of the hidden uh, lines visible. And we don't see any continuation there. 
if I go back into the uh, to the feature and unclick the uh, the merge result, now I'm going to see that intersecting of the two spheres. All right, so a lot of things going on, and we'll um, we'll call this one good for now. And the next video will be uploading our assignment.